Hello and welcome to the Screaming Cinema Podcast. We have a cool episode today that I think a lot of us have been looking forward to. We're going to be diving into the Criterion Collection, um, talk about the collection as a whole, and then each throw out four recommendations for the Criterion sale. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like every time July and November comes up, I'm just like watching videos. I'm like looking up reviews. I'm like trying to find what I'm missing or, or which of the new ones I need to pick up. So um, hopefully this helps all you. I'm Max and I'm joined uh, by my two co-hosts here, James Cole Clay and Preston Barda. What's going on, guys? Doing well. Um, everything, everything is going on. You excited to talk some Criterion? Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm gearing back up to dive in. Yep. I mean, dude, get, I have my queue. Get, get is, the wallet ready. The wallet's ready. Uh, the queue is set up all year round. I know what I'm missing. So you, you dusted off the shelf. You made some room. I did make some room. I have about a spot for like maybe 20. So I don't know how many I'll buy. Maybe like 10 or 15 movies. We'll see. Yeah, you 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 got to keep a little space there for uh for the next sale. Um, yeah, four months later. Let's start off by uh, talking about our relationship with the uh, the Criterion Collection. Um, when you started collecting it, if it was Laserdisc, DVD, Blu-ray, kind of where where your relationship is with that, what you like about it. Um, Preston, you want to kick things off there? I know you probably have been collecting these these the longest. I'm relatively new new to the game. Yeah, I uh, I, I wouldn't say that I started collecting when I because the one that I have is a laser disc and that's the earliest one i have and it was my grandfather's um i remember us watching it together because he had a laser disc player unfortunately i don't have it anymore i still collect laser disc for the art but it is uh king kong on laser disc nice that's so, uh, cool what's cool about it is when you can, that's so cool the the like the audio commentary i think it's just like uh, i can't remember it's like some historian because these movie movie's been around for a long time uh you have to watch it separately so you can't like you can't watch it with the movie unfortunately like you can now but no interesting just, but yeah it's pretty interesting but um yeah I, w- I would say that i probably started collecting with uh when i used to go to our local video store which was uh hastings in denton texas i started with Days to Confused on DVD, or maybe it was Fear and Loathing. I think it was Fear and Loathing just because the, the artwork is what pulled me in. And since then, like since that moment, I just remember looking into what the label was, what, what, they, what they're what they into, like the, the certain look The for instance, we did MVD Rewind Collection, where we, we did a lot of focus into uh, on the on the spine. And so when you not to tease what I'm going to be doing later, but the the spine, like something about it, like just felt classic to me. Like you're picking up a leather bound book in a, in a library. And so um, I've just been a fan of them since, since that moment. And um, probably like really kicked it into high gear when uh, I want to say when me and Cole started becoming friends, I remember he got me a, uh, fantastic mr fox Hmm. on blu-ray for just being being a cool guy that he is he just gave it to me um and then since since then i got on the probably yeah 2013 is when i got on their the the to be able to cover their titles and then i just started collecting collecting and taking advantage of the sales but yeah i love them and um happy to continue collecting and see where we go from here how many uh, how many titles do you have um uh, i don't know not not as many as i i thought but uh like 150 and how do you order do you order them by a title or spine number oh i do the title i'm like yeah. spy spine yeah. number that'd be, be hard <laughs> um but uh there's a few like richard link later i'll i have my own section for him so i have like the before trilogy and everything uh separated um but yeah mostly the title and uh, sometimes i'll rearrange and do it by color i like it always fun to mess around with it um 
you know, digibooks together or, you know, whatever the, whatever ones you, that look best. But uh, for me, I got on it a lot later. I think my first one was Night of the Living Dead in 2018. Um, I think before like the last three, four years, I'd always just collected, you know, like we talked about before, Best Buy Blu-rays, new releases. That's pretty much what my whole collection was. And then within the last three to four years, I really started getting into uh, more of the uh, boutique Blu-rays. And I think what you talked about is like, just when you like pick it up, everything about it, like how how the uniformity that they go with, um, you know, on the bottom of the title, how it has the year and on the back, how uh, everything is. And just, they're a label unlike any other. Some labels put out lots of good movies or some cult movies and some good movies, but with them, it just feels like everything they put out is worth owning. Obviously you may not like everything, but it just deserves to be, you know, saved in this format and be presented in the best possible way with, with the scans that they do and the effort that they put into the features. Um, like, I think we talked about a lot with the artwork from MVD, but the artwork on these is just so cool. Each time they put out a title that you're familiar with to see kind of what they do. Uh, I also love looking at like Reddit with the, the um, kind of fan, fan artwork that they come up with for some of these criterion films or ones that aren't on the criterion collection like i saw the kindergarten cop one always cracks me up every time that comes up for like april fools um it is a good one but just really cool label and you know like i said i've only been into it for for three four years now but i probably have like 40 titles and gonna maybe add 50 percent to that here another next month well um i guess that only leaves my relationship with criterion up in the air but uh I think I discovered them probably through, I mean, there's, there's so many different paths that I could have taken, but, but I guess what first started with is like the Wes Anderson movies uh, coming out on Criterion. Uh, because I mean, when World Tenenbaums came out, that was the only version that was available on DVD was the Criterion version of Royal Tenenbaums. And so you start to wonder, what is this? And, you know, it looks cool. It's got like, you know, the aesthetic of the Wes Anderson movie. So I, I think it just slowly kind of by osmosis started to figure it out. And in college, I picked up you know, the Do the Right Thing DVD. And it's a really cool, it has really cool artwork. And there's a really cool Criterion release of that. And I think from there, that's when it took off for me. And you could get them at Hastings, which was cool because you could get them used for like 24 bucks or something like that and then transitioned into blu-ray because i went to the i went to Preston and i went to college together um at unt and our barnes and noble i worked at the mall and barnes and noble had you know the criterion section so i would always browse there and i was like oh shit they have blu-rays and so i really remember it picking up when francis ha came out straight to and i was like wow you know because i thought that movie was so cool in college and then from there I just started collecting. Um, I just kind of collect them as a fan. I like to collect them now as I go basically by filmmaker or the kind of feeling I have about a film. Like I really wanted to get a lot of like the new Hollywood stuff that they had, the Hal Ashby stuff, the Dennis Hopper stuff. You got a happy um, section? A happy section? Yeah, you said order it by by feeling. You, you like well, section different sections for like happy well, sad kind, movies kind of actually like I, I don't i have like the bob dylan documentaries next to like true stories and then that kind of goes into you know uh david lynch stuff but then i have all the richard linkletter stuff right next to each other and then the hitchcocks and then just foreign stuff and so i mean yeah i, I kind of i kind of like you know like this this uh criterion sale like i want to get like a few robert altman movies so it's like that's kind of where i'm where i'm focusing on last year i got all the david lynch stuff so that, that's kind of how i go is by filmmaker so yeah it's cool to do it that way for sure um so what we're gonna do in the episode is we each brought a stack of four discs that we're gonna be recommending for the sale um hopefully they're not out of print but they might be so we can always uh you know, recommend uh, if you want to pick it up on eBay for hundred or two hundred dollars, you can you can do that as well. Um, but if you want to go ahead and uh, kick things off with your first one, uh, James, Rosemary's yeah. Baby, <laughs> dude, I, I I can't I can't um, do that one. I thought that one off limits because it's like for what 
you know i mean paramount is releasing it again already so you can get it on blu-ray but it's not it doesn't look cool uh so my first choice is something that i think is kind of like cinema's greatest villain in it in a way uh and it's a movie that's not really horror but it is kind of scary and very suspenseful uh, by a filmmaker that everybody knows. I picked uh, Notorious. Have you ever got, have you guys ever seen Alfred Hitchcock's Notorious? Mm-hmm. Yep, I have that one. I got a VHS tape this of it. Movie, this movie's great. Um, I would like to see that VHS tape because there's this one line of Alfred Hitchcock VHSs that like all match. And I have- it's a, it's a hard show. Oh, it's a hard show. That's cool. Um, well, this is a gorgeous movie and it has one of the best endings, I think, maybe i've ever seen on the criterion movie you know we'll just kind of keep it there i'm not gonna be like it's one of the best endings of all time but it's a great ending it's really memorable has a great scene filled with so much tension and nazis and you know uh cary grant is absolutely fantastic in this movie and ingrid bergman yep as well Uh, as a david lynch fan i uh, am obliged to love ingrid bergman because she is the mother of isabella rossellini and you can definitely see that in this movie. This movie is very sexy, very cool. Um, I mean, it's one of my favorite Hitchcock movies. Um, I discovered it last year when I just kind of blind bought it. I thought it looked really cool and I was not wrong. Um, and, you know, the thing is for this, what, what's cool about these is, you know, yeah, of course, it's a Hitchcock movie. It's really cool. It looks like it has some, you know, some context that the, that the movie gives in terms of just where where film was like where the culture was at large uh when this movie came out in 1946 you know it's like right after world war ii um so it's you know it's interesting to think about it like that and what i'm looking at right here is is just some stuff about the cinematography by cinematographer john bailey who was just the president of the academy recently um but there i think what i'm looking for right here and i think this has it on it um is is there's this like film scholar that gives like essays and video essays i'll I'll have to find it on another come back to it later and find it but um yeah i mean the thing is is what i think is really cool why i picked that one too is because of like the cultural context that it brings to it you know aside from it just being a cool hitchcock movie it's like yeah of course we want this on there but here's why um and you can really kind of discover new things that way so uh, it's an atypical choice, something I probably wouldn't have seen otherwise, um, but I, I I loved it. And my partner, Erica, and I, we kind of went crazy for it. So, yeah. yeah, I chose Notorious. It's beautiful black and white images. And if you, you got a dark night and a crisp screen, screen um, it'll look great. So yeah. hey, You Good can't choice. go wrong uh, blind buying Hitchcock on Criterion. I think, you know, mm-hmm. anything they've put out of his, I've, I've liked that I've picked up. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to pick the, uh, the one I talked about. That was the first one I picked up, and that's Night of the Living Dead um this has it's a two blu-ray uh two disc blu-ray set comes with a poster um it has a really cool um i don't know what you call it it's they called a program but it has uh frank darabont uh guillermo del toro and robert rodriguez just talking about the film and growing up with it and kind of how it uh impacted um them obviously i think you know i'm not going to go too far into the movie so much has already been said about it uh and everything that came through but it has a really cool um digibook just show you guys real quick here really nice. like the artwork on it just a cool way to go right with the keeping it black and white and keeping it uh, you know creepy looking um, if you've seen this movie on like a mill creek blu-ray or a dvd and you're you know don't think there's another reason to pick it up you need to do it for this because this scan is incredible i think like we talked about how good black and white looks on a, on a tv especially with this scan it's a 4k digital restoration that was supervised uh by romero so highly recommend this for the scan and you know full another blu-ray disc of features that that you can look up online but really highly recommend this especially for horror fans or for fans of the uh the collection i don't I have something to add about that. That's like really kind of funny. Yeah. What's up Uh, about, about there are a ton of different scans and transfers to this movie. That's why it's like really important that this movie's on criterion at Mm -hmm. this point. So I put on, uh, I I ran to go grab dinner with um, Erica today and we came back, we put on a movie on Hulu. We came back and night of the living dead was on. 
Okay. Which is a co- kind of a cool feeling. Yeah. You have an eerie feeling to come into your house and Night of the Living Dead is on. And the transfer is dog shit. So it's yes. on stars. Yeah. It looks terrible. So um, I just kind of wanted to back up what you were saying. Like, that's the reason to to get it too. It's because that it looks so sharp. Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, we all know that it, it issues with the rights where pretty much anyone was allowed to play it without paying anything, which caused so many shitty DVD transfers or VHS transfers or, you know, ownership of who actually had the element. So um, definitely nice to, to preserve that, um, you know, in the Criterion Collection. Hell yeah, man. All right, so I'm going to book in my selections with horror. So I'm going to begin with the 1922 Swedish silent movie, Haxen right there all right um so it's part fiction part documentary uh exploration of witchcraft history from its earliest days up into uh 1922 when the film released uh from pagan worship to hysteria uh it's directed by benjamin christensen uh so he takes you on this journey through the ages with these absolutely stunning visuals like like not to what was it? What's that movie? Uh, uh, Just friends. Like my God, <laughs> um, they they use uh, color filters, like these tinting and uh, lighting, just just super impressive. Um, have you ever seen those old clips of like Charlie Chaplin and various other like early filmmakers who do like do these like seemingly impossible stuff by playing with perspective like you even if you haven't seen the movies like i mean, yeah. highly recommend watching like charlie chaplin but if you're like on instagram as as heavily as all three of us are you follow a bunch of film people and then every once in a while they'll share like clips and then you're like jesus christ how do they do that like they like charlie chaplin's doing stuff with trains and buildings and uh so it, this is very similar it's like it's it's in that same ballpark so they're achieving work that you you can't help but be transported back to the 20s wondering how the hell they pulled off these visuals so the film is uh divided into seven parts the first part is a series of pictures and engravings that showcase imagery that comes later in the film um like the the the, the engravings and the drawings that kind of come to life and you kind of see them a little more fleshed out uh, but the, there's this unbelievable sequence where a bunch of witches are flying over a village on broomsticks and they achieve this look. Um, I recommend I, th- there should be a clip on YouTube um, if, if you need more information to go off of to check this out. But they, they achieve this by shooting like 80, nearly 80 actors on broomsticks individually and they later combine them on an optical printer to achieve like this very seamless effect. Uh, are, are y'all familiar with optical printers, like how they work? No, no, I haven't seen a this little either. bit. E- so, Eric has talked about this kind of stuff. This is cool. So optical printer is, there's a camera, there's a single camera, but it has multiple projectors. And so they're, they're able to like re-photograph things so they can stack it naturally. And that's how they did it back in the day without using, you know, computers and everything like that. So they were able to, do stuff like, uh, you know, on Citizen Kane, they did like uh, mat work and they did uh, uh, fade ins, fade outs. They could do slow motion, fast motion. So that kind of helped them to achieve some of those uh, effects that are a little more subtle these days. And we don't really notice because they've kind of been used. But back then there was like a real art to it. And so th- th- that's what makes something like this. And I'm not normally somebody who's like into a lot of silent films, but it was recommended to me by uh, my co-host on another film horror podcast that I do called My Bloody Podcast. And his name's Brian Kluger. And so I'm always, I was at the time looking for other horror uh, films in the Criterion Collection. He's like, have you ever heard of Hacks? And, and I think he had a DVD copy or something like that because uh, it was like, oddly enough, like later on that year that he was telling me about it, they, they released it on Blu-ray. And so I was able to review it then. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. You get like these title cards and everything because it's a silent film, right? Yeah. Um, but there's a version on the, th- uh, on the disc that's uh let me say that the silent film version is about 104 minutes long but you can watch this narrated version 
that uh, has like a musical score and everything like that. And it's like 76 minutes long. So if you don't have the patience to sit through something like that, I'm not recommending that that's the way that you go, but it is kind of interesting because uh, it gives you a whole different feel. I would start out with the, you know, the way that it was intended and then you can uh, play around with it uh, by, you know, going through some of the extras that give you a little more historical context that kind of gives, that psyched me up and uh, is getting me to talk about some of these more minute details, but uh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. It's, it's a great film. Um, it doesn't have like, it, you know, it's just a basic Blu-ray look with the hard case and everything. So there's nothing like super special about it other than like, I, I love the art. It's very creepy. Mm. It's something that you can see cool. like red dragons wall or something like that, but absolutely. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's pretty solid. Uh, I'd check it out if you haven't checked it out. Okay, I'm gonna call an audible. <laughs> all right, I like it. Yeah, I um, I try. What I was trying to do with all my picks was I was what I initially was gonna do was like pick something that was all just kind of dark and kind of just gross. But I'm gonna um, like switch it up because I was gonna choose. Uh, you know what? I'm not gonna say what I was gonna choose. Uh, so I chose this movie that I love. I discovered it last year on the Criterion Channel, Lost in America, Albert Brooks's. Mm-hmm. You guys seen Lost in America? I haven't. Yeah. Oh my freaking god! Put this movie on your radar. Yeah. Um, there's a. I'm trying to get a good look at this. My lighting's kind of weird because there there's a lot of glare coming off of that dome of yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, <laughs> this movie's great. Um. It's got Albert Brooks and Julie Haggerty. They're like 35 years old. They're like, you know, they got their nest egg, which is pretty substantial. I think it's like 186 thousand dollars or something like that. And, it, you know, they get this notion in their head that they want to, like, have this, like, easy rider lifestyle. And so they get a Winnebago, essentially, and they're like, we're going to take off. And then, it, you know, you think it's going to be like this road trip movie, but it, it's not. But it turns into something so much more satisfying than just a simple, like, 80s road trip movie i mean you really connect to it in a lot of ways i think no matter what if you're you know kind of around our age and the movie is just so funny and so warm and it has this amazing scene with gary marshall the director of like pretty woman you guys know gary marshall Mm -hmm. um that's just great i I really to me this movie is like pretty spoiler heavy like i because i just didn't see the directions that it goes but um i'll say this preston just referenced just friends julie haggerty is like one of the funniest comedic actors maybe ever i don't know airplane just friends this there's this scene that um we always quote in my house where she's she's gambling and she's just like 22 22 and she's just so funny and unique Um, and it's it's amazing Albert Brooks is so I mean venomous and mean and you know and in some ways correct to be as mean as he is and 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 so it's a great movie and it's only 90 minutes and I mean Albert Brooks is just I I discovered him and his films last year on the Criterion channel and was just blown away by all of them Um, so yeah this is just awesome movie so if you want to buy it for 20 bucks like that and defending your life of his are both on criterion so this was the one that i i thought was great um just so special so yeah that's the one i recommend i like the audible Mm -hmm. uh next up on my stack here i have uh, gregory peck in the gunfighter from 1950 um this is a one of the more recent releases they have i think it was from last year um i hadn't really heard Mm -hmm. much about the film i knew you know obviously good things about it but i hadn't really known the backstory for it um watched it and i'd literally like mean immediately top 10 western uh for me after i watched it especially in um you know the copy that we have here it's a 4k digital restoration and it looks looks incredible it's a story i mean a little bit like unforgiven i want to say where gregory peck is you know the the biggest gun everyone knows him everywhere he goes uh people are aware of his backstory 
and it's you know obviously with that people want to make a name for themselves and and kill him and so it's kind of how how do you hang up your gun how do you you know uh finally like be able to just go live live on a ranch somewhere buy your own land and kind of the back and forth that he has with that he has a kid and a family that he's trying to balance things with um while doing that just a really cool story um i kind of like westerns like this where it's not the you know, the old kind of uh, Clint Eastwood or those ones where it's just, hey, we're going to go, we're bad gun. It's just more to the story based on based on what we have instead of um, just just the action in it. So that's awesome. Uh, his name's Jimmy Ringo, which is cool. And it's directed by uh, Henry King and shot by Arthur C. Miller. So really, really, really recommend this one. Um, same thing with the case, plain case. It doesn't have a ton of features on it, but but the the disc itself is definitely worth it. That, that one looks good. That one's been on my radar. Yeah, it, it's definitely awesome. He's just like so much confidence just sitting around knowing he's the shit and doesn't even oh, want to yeah. do anything. So like there's this scene I put on my story on Instagram right after I watched it where this kid's just trying to get him to pretty much draw his gun for anything. And he waits until the last possible second and still just he takes him out. So really, really cool. All right. Well, my pick, um, naturally being the Richard Linklater guy, I have to just mention Days Confused. Uh, not horror at all, but is um, my favorite movie of all time. I, I watch it multiple, a few times a year, especially on my birthday. It's the first rated R movie I ever saw. I remember my dad having the VHS and... I would just constantly ask him about like, what is this movie about? Cause I, it was just like on the top, it was at the top of the shelf. So I couldn't reach it. <laughs> and so I would always ask him what it was, what is about? He's like, you're not old enough yet, but there's going to be one day where you can watch it. And then I think I was probably like nine or something. So he, <laughs> uh, still not the most appropriate age to watch something like that. But uh, man, I fell in love right away. And uh, I guess it's just because of the music, like the, my dad was, I mean, he was listening to 92.5 and 93.3 The Bone uh, in his uh, shop. And that's where I was. That's pretty much where I like spent most of my childhood. And so we were just listening to those rock tunes all the time. And so I could just feel why he loved it so much. And I was always curious about his youth and growing up in the 70s. And, and so I felt like this movie was a way of me peeking into that, into the rear view of his life and get a sense of like what it was like being in a small town Texas uh, or small Texas town and driving your cars and we grew up in Denton Texas and so we had University Drive and so that was like the main strip and he was just like yeah there was just everybody showing off their cars driving back and forth he's like that's how I would you know spend my dates with your mom we would just go up and down as soon as we reached the end of university we'd come back and then you know you'd see your friends at stoplights and you go to sonic and, and in the film it's uh, top uh, top notch um so uh yeah just i love the movie so incredibly much i think like tarantino's called it the ultimate hangout movie and it really is uh so I just enjoy hanging out with the characters. I can say so much about the, the movie. I could spend all day talking about it, but I think why I just value it so much as a Criterion release is because I feel like they capture the spirit of the film so incredibly well. Like, I mean, this, the movie's about like the mundane moments, those, so here it is like the little page doodles that you would do in your classroom while you're bored or uh, writing on uh, bathroom stall walls, yearbooks um, and uh, decorating your locker and things like that. Um, so the design of it is just so gorgeous. Like even when you take the disc out, there's like art that continues on the inside where they have the holes. And so you can look in there and peek and see like, oh man, I wish I could like break this open and just see what it looks like f flattened out. Um, but it's like, it's probably like one of the heaviest ones next to like, I don't know, uh, the new world or something like that, where the, the booklet has a lot of weight to it. And the yeah. booklet's really cool because it has uh, uh, like, you know, Q and A's and things like that, all kinds of behind the scenes photos, essays. So as somebody who just like worships this movie, like that's, that's right up my alley. Like I'll just consume anything uh, from this film. Um, but 
one of the things that uh, I really like on this outside of the making of, there's like a, I don't know, like an hour or 70, 80 minute long making of that's really great because you can see the actors talking about like what their hopes of what the film could be. And they thought it was going to be something that would just took off immediately. And then obviously that's not what happened. It didn't do so well um, at the start. And then it wasn't until like 10 years later, which is where some of the other interviews that happened in the documentary um, where they're, they went to like a 10 year reunion in Austin and like all these people showed up and they just didn't know like how much of its success it was once it was on VHS and Laserdisc. Um, so there's that documentary is really well done but there's my favorite is there's all these like behind the scenes clips like if you get like screen factory discs or arrow like every once in a while they'll just have i think the last one i could really recall is uh screen factory's release of urban legends like there's just like out like an hour's yep. worth of behind the scenes footage and like nobody's gonna watch that really but the fact that they you know kind of like what eric wilkinson was saying like you know just throw everything on there absolutely like that, that's an option so if you're really interested in that kind of stuff it's really cool to see like what kind of mindset these actors were in as they went on to film this really iconic scene um so th getting a sense of that's really cool and then you can kind of see like how these actors uh like uh Ben Affleck interacted with people and how he talked and uh, uh, like, what is it? Like on a Kevin Smith disc, he was, he was like, uh, Ben Affleck's like the biggest fan of himself. Like he'll, he'll, he'll watch his own stuff and you could, I just want to hear his own commentary. So it's just like, there's the, the hangout factor continues um, there. So yeah, I highly recommend uh, the Days of Confused uh, Criterion release. Uh, I love it and it looks fantastic uh the transfer that they did of it yeah i like the idea to throw everything on there like i didn't talk about it but on night of the living dead they have um 16 millimeter dailies that they have shot they have a work print uh you know so you can literally if everyone's movies is uh I, or there's a movie that's everyone's favorite movie right so it's cool to kind of do everything like that even if you know it might not be um, one that you have, someone's going to sit there and watch all four or five hours of special features and, and dig into it right away when it comes out. So it's always really cool. There's so many good ones to choose from. You know, it's hard. Do I go for... You doing another Audible? <laughs> no. Uh -oh. No, I'm not. I'm it, it, not. it sounded like you're about to. No, but there, there are so many that I want to talk about. I know. We but should just do an eight-hour podcast the, and go through a whole collection. Just do a rapid fire at the very end. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe so. Um, I, I'm going to choose one that I, I that would be horrific to people. So that's kind of what I wanted to go with, um, with something, something like that. Um, I mean, there's really no reason to not reveal what I'm doing, but I'm going to do John Waters' Female Trouble. Do you guys have this movie? Mm -hmm. I don't. You, have you ever seen this shit, Max? No, I haven't. I haven't it's seen a lot wild, of John man. Waters it's, stuff. It's, so we went through them all last summer in chronological order, which is one of the most fun things I've ever done cinematically in the past few years. Um, and so I picked this one up during the Criterion Cell last year. And so it's got Divine in it. Divine is awesome. Uh, very funny. It's clearly a, a man in drag. And he plays he plays this character that's essentially kind of like, it's kind of like an E-True Hollywood story version of, somebody who wants to be bad just bad and just wants to just do do anything they want to do just you know fulfill any impulse and get cha-cha heels and all these really fun campy trashy things and so for somebody who really kind of gravitates towards that kind of stuff and gravitates towards like stuff that's just kind of like a little like and just like non-actors you know um this this kind of satisfies that with like a really amazing performance um, in the middle or in the center of the movie uh, with Divine. So, I mean, Female Trouble is, is really funny. Re another really short movie, 97 minutes long. You know, the color, the colors are cool in it. Um, I like the artwork and all that cool stuff, but it is just another movie. So I, I tried to kind of throw things out that were a little different. 
uh, Definitely. something that somebody might not think of for Criterion. Uh, I, I mean, I really, really like it. it kind of comes down to taste. Watch a couple scenes if you like it, but it, it's really funny and really silly. I mean, it's kind of just like this really crazy rise to fame that I've never seen something like, but you know, I mean, you can kind of see how Hollywood versions of movies, even like Tanya or Corella, Craig Gillespie stuff, um, that, that this kind of pulls from in some ways. You know, there's definitely inspiration there. Uh, Female Trouble is really funny, has a great theme song. John Waters is hilarious. They truly don't give a shit. And it's got a gorgeous transfer. Um, lots of really cool outfits and things like that. Sorry, my dogs are fighting. Um, <laughs> that yeah, I was, I was just really impressed. It really stuck with me. So I, I hope people give it a shot. I mean, I, I, should. I, I think it, it's a little more palatable than you'd think. And um, it's it's a lot of fun. Something I didn't think I would like as much as I did, but uh, I really enjoyed it. As somebody who watching stuff like, you know, I mean, this is a like all but like kids, you know, movies that are just weird people, just weird, strange people. Um, I like that. I like it for the same reasons I like like Spring Breakers or yes, you know, you know, um, just stuff like that, you know. So it's 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 cool. It's a cool movie. So, all right. Well, we're talking about heavy ones. I have another heavy one here, uh, The Silence of the Lambs. This one has uh, two Blu-rays, and then it also comes with a booklet too. Um, this one is interesting. It's got a new 4K scan. Um, one of the things we haven't really talked about, but Criterion does a lot is anytime they can work with the cinematographer or director, um, director of photography, they do. And this one has a new 4K scan that was um, approved by the director of photography on this one, uh, Talk Fujimoto. Um, it's interesting how it's shot. It's in a weird time, right? It's 91. So it's newer, but at the same time, it's the film is really grainy on it, but I kind of like it for, for how it is. Uh, but the disc itself is really cool. Um, we were talking about artwork on this one. We have, you know, on the front here. And then when you go in the inside, we have a booklet with a cool intro by Jodie Foster and then, you know, artwork throughout. And then on the disc, it has um, pull it up here has this cool look to it. I just really like it, but this is a classic. Um, and obviously I just, I, I like the mix that they do. Like we're, movies we're talking about are, you know, there's some that have been put out five or 10 times. There's some that have never been put out, but this one, I just feel like it's cool to really get some of these horror classics um, as, as a part of this collection. Um, and on here, as far as the features on it, um, they have 38 minutes of deleted scenes, which is crazy. Also four documentaries on it with tons and tons of interviews, uh, behind the scenes featurette. I mean, there's just so much stuff on it. So, um, I think when I actually bought this, I checked out, I think I got to like an hour and a half in on the features before I finally called it a night, but, um, really cool release and definitely one that every horror fan should own. Indeed. Yeah. Cole and I talk about the editing of that movie quite often. Yeah. yeah it's just one of the best yeah um mine is uh also heavy uh heavy in weight and also a very heavy movie mm. uh, that one there we go roma um cole knows my relationship with this movie like when i saw it in theaters i was not a fan I, I had a, I had an incredibly hard time connecting with it, even though like Alfonso Cuaron is somebody who I love and appreciate his work for a long, long time. And I just, I don't know what I was expecting that day. It could have been just because my child was born not too long after that. And there's a certain scene in the film that just really hit me hard. And I, uh, I don't know, before that I saw the movie Mother and it had dealt with, uh, harming of babies and I just I just didn't have the emotional space in my life for something like that and I just I, I like I admired and appreciated it but when I got this uh criterion release like I I just fell in love with it it could have been because I was in a different place in life and I think that's something that uh you know Cole Cole and I have a lot of conversations with each other about very deep things such as Sometimes a, a movie 
can just find you in a certain time in your life, whether you connected with it at the beginning or not, um, where you can just kind of like rediscover it and then find all these different meanings in them. And this is one of those cases where maybe it was because I watched all the extras and I got a sense of what Alfonso Cuaron was going for. Like there's all these like beautiful quotes that he was talking about, like his childhood and like um, how cinema to him like represented loneliness and that this movie was a bit, a, a way of kind of capturing that. Uh, through like this family undergoing about as many upheavals as the country around them, which is Mexico. Um, so I just, uh, it's a hard movie to watch. It, it's, it's watching this maid that will just stop at nothing. Like she has nothing but love for the family that she's uh, helping and uh, cleaning up after and guiding them. Like she's she's the real mother in the situation. And so you just get a sense of like the hard life that uh, some people in Mexico live and they'll just, you know, they carry on. They have nothing but love. Like my family grew up in Mexico. Um, my, my mother's half Spanish makes me a quarter. My grandma's full Spanish and so they, she can speak that she helped me through my Spanish classes. Um, but the, the community aspect of it and just the, the, the love, like I can't say too much or I can't say enough about the love, like that love just shines so much, especially in one uh, pivotal sequence where the maid saves uh, somebody, a, a child from drowning and uh, the, the waves are just crashing over and her over her and hitting her and hitting her and she cries but then you know the next scene they're you know they're happy they're spending time together and that's just kind of like what life is just a series of like waves hitting you um, so I think it's a beautiful movie and there's it's gorgeous and black and white and the the sound design is what stuck out to me when I saw it in the theaters and I think that carries across beautifully um, when you watch it at home and it the, the I mean, it's a heavy, heavy packaging, but it's just because of this book, the book that's in it it's, uh, that has like all these really great essays and uh, photography, black and white photography. Um, so yeah, each each frame of this movie, you could hang on your wall if you wanted to. Um, so if you didn't love the movie when it came out in 2018 or when you watched it on Netflix, um, watch it watch this criterion and watch the extras and you'll you'll rediscover it yeah there's another cool i mean a few things cool about the movie obviously it was nominated for um uh, 10 academy awards it was the first mexican entry to win uh best best foreign language film and won best cinematographer best director um and it was cool i think this is the first one netflix uh partnered with criterion on right yep. Yep. which is like the best thing ever because I hate it when movies like that, you know, that are so critically acclaimed or so, you know, amazing or moving that you just can't own physical media and you want in your collection, especially be able to be put out by them. Um, not sure if anyone has these, but obviously parasite or, or sorry, marriage, um, marriage story and um, Irishman. Irishman. I mean, it's just cool that they do that. And so hopefully they keep that going for some of their more, um you know highbrow films are ones that fit fit nicely in the criterion collection yeah yeah i was just talking to my wife about this when we watched uh the most recent episode of loki because cole and i have been collecting those steel books for so long it's just like disappointing that we can't own a physical copy of that tv series but i'm glad they're like criterions like they're they're going to be doing a amazon releases and so yeah um yeah, yeah, I'm glad that they're working with these fil with filmmakers to make sure uh, their films are celebrated in, in the way that, you know, the way the pathway that we fell in love with them, our generation. Yeah, I really I, I want to experience that Atmos track. That's another reason why I keep going on and on about Atmos to you guys, because I want to see that movie. Um, I mean, I was lucky enough to see it at TIFF in this like <clears throat> mind fucking blowing theater um it was crazy the sound in that movie it's like one of the best sound tracks you're ever going to get in a film probably uh really dynamic i still have a complicated relationship with that film but i own it as well because those extras are some of the best criterion has ever done it's because of quaron is so uh he's so poignant uh, yeah really that, spot on. that that uh plane sequence in the very beginning 
that yes. that's like the best example of like how incredible the sound is in that movie yes. where you can just hear it and you can Shoot. hear it in your speakers yeah. go from one side to the yeah. other. Yeah, it rolls. It rolls. But man, yeah. So are we are we not gonna get a Blu-ray of Luca? Like that movie was great. <laughs> they they probably will for that. I think it's just kind of the um, television style, or you know how they have that set bummer. up, like Mandalorian or you know WandaVision or man. Loki. Think like, how cool the the steel books could be for yeah. Loki, especially. Like, well, what's I mean, the hurt in that? They know, like, if anyone collects movies uh, and is diehard in you know physical media, I feel like maybe not everyone, but I feel like Marvel Cinematic Universe is probably like the most rebought or multiple copies bought uh the film series there ever was like i have oh, all dude. of them and people have you know five steel books and every single different one from other countries like mm-hmm. just at least just throw out a standard fucking blu-ray or 4k yeah, yeah so we'll we'll, we'll see it, it kind of sucks i mean there yeah there are so many versions i've bought guardians of the galaxy i think like three or four times something crazy like that yeah so Anyway, is it uh, last choice? Is it my choice? Last yeah. one? Yep. Last last round here. All right. Well, this is one that's not super palatable, I think, for people. It took me <laughs> a while to kind of come around to this, but it's uh, Twin Peaks Firewalk With Me. This movie is awesome. So good. Um, I watched it after uh, our friend Brian Kluger got me the entire Twin Peaks series on Blu-ray for my birthday last year. So shouts out to Brian. I'll have to thank him again for that. Um so yeah, this was amazing. I, I got this last year and look at that red, man. It's just so cool. This is a horror movie. I, I'm pretty certain it has um, a great score by uh, Angelo Balamenti um, that is really wonderful. And there's a sequence in the film that really highlights it and it's really dark and twisted. But I mean, you know, I think as a standalone movie, it's, it's really solid, but I, I still recommend it for anybody who likes David Lynch. I I, you know, it's just one of those things where you're either on board or you're not, but it, it's, it's really cool and, and a really fascinating movie and, and really, I think, emotionally resonant for what happens to Laura Palmer and just what she's going through and kind of just how, you know, she, even though she's the victim of the entire series, how people still tried to vilify her um, in some ways, but um, this is a pretty cool release here. I mean, it's got some you know, stuff like this on the inside, you know, this is like a big Twin Peaks kind of thing. And then, you know, the symbolism, it's cool on the disc. Nice. And you have one of these awesome books. So um, in these books here, what they have and all the David Lynch Criterion releases, um, what they have in there are these um, interviews with David Lynch that are out of this specific book. Um, I wish I could remember what the book is, but um man it's it's really interesting and you know he always has the weirdest responses to things he seems that the things he does are normal but they're not at all um, no so so yeah i i love it it's it's a good film it's got david bowie in it david bowie was reportedly not happy with his performance in the movie he gives a very funny uh southern accent in it um, that i quite enjoy but um he uh did not he wanted another crack at it and david lynch said no and david bowie was very mad so um it, it's it's a great film and you know I, I really encourage people to i mean shit man you know it's a, it's it's a busy world out there and twin peaks is a lot you know we had to be like okay this is what we're doing we're watching twin peaks but it, it's it's incredibly rewarding um and the characters are some of the best and it's now one of my favorite things ever so i mean if you like david lynch which i certainly do um he really i mean this might be my favorite david lynch movie um so yeah this is this is a good one and that's twin peaks fire walk with me and it's very scary and fuck check it out yeah i need to watch that actually i haven't um ever finished all of the twin peaks i've watched like i didn't watch it originally and i got like five episodes into the new one and then i was like why am i watching the new one without watching the original before so i stopped so it's on my to-do list when i have 50 free hours is to check out all of uh both of those both of those seasons and the uh the, that movie yeah i mean you don't really have to watch um second one yeah i mean like i mean you could like maybe go through like 10 episodes of it and then you know branch off but 
I am not somebody who's going to do that. And <laughs> you know, if you have somebody to watch it with you, that's when it's really special. And I, and I was fortunate enough to have that. Yeah. Um, so, so it, that's what was so cool about it and drinking like a lot of coffee and cherry eating cherry pie at the same time. So <laughs> yeah. it's, and we, we went to the, dude, we, we went in, dude, we went to the falls. We went to Seattle. Yeah. Max, you're from Washington. You would love the show. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, like we went to the uh, Snoqualmie Falls uh, where it is. And then we went to uh, the Double R Diner. What's that town, Max, that that oh. I was in? You commented on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm spacing on it. It doesn't now. matter for the podcast. I, I, yeah, but... I used to drive up there all the time because I uh, there's a cool uh, uh, pass to go snowboarding at uh, called Snoqualmie oh, nice. right next to the falls. So, uh, yeah, North, it rules out North there, Bend, man. Right. Yes, North Bend. There you go. Yes. And so, so, yeah, we got really into it. And it was really special. And so even though this movie is really fucked up, there's, there is some deep emotion and respect that David Lynch pays to this character. And it, it's really beautiful. I mean, it really is. It's fucked up, but it's beautiful. So um, yeah, that's a personal favorite. So yeah. I'm going to wrap with uh, my favorite movie in the collection. I think this is one that um, I had never really even heard about and I just watched it and it instantly became in my top 10 movies of all time. And that's uh, on the waterfront uh, nice. with Marlon Brando. Just, I mean, just seeing the movie in this presentation for the first time too, I feel so lucky. It's such a cool film, Marlon Brando, um, very young kind of longshoreman prize fighter um, and just kind of his, his upbringing, things he struggles with. It, it totally reminds me of a lot of future films that kind of go with that. Um, in raging bull things like that with with the fighters and um it's just it's hard to explain why i like the movie so much it's just it's just like you just not it's not a hangout movie but it's like one of those films i think that you watch like the godfather um or, or things like that that you just get to go on this experience and journey with the main character um the criterion uh release of it's cool it actually has um, it, it comes in a one six six one aspect ratio, and it has on the second disc. There's two additional aspect ratios, which is one eight five one and one three three one. So there must be something about it because there's also a um, visual essay on the aspect ratio, and this has just some of the craziest uh, features. Um, has an audio commentary has a conversation with uh, Scorsese and Kent Jones, has an hour-long documentary, also a documentary on the making of the film, has an interview with an actor who's actually a, a longshoreman, and, um, and then in the release, too. It's just cool artwork, comes with, like we talked about, with the, with the booklets, um, with the booklet here, too, just interviews and essays and just really cool release and um, definitely a movie that, I was not expecting or didn't really know anything about going into it and just instantly became a classic and an all-time favorite of mine. Nice. Hell yeah. Yep. Well, I'll end this on a very fucked up note with uh, <laughs> Drome, Videodrome, uh, David Cronenberg's movie. Um, it, it really is a very messed up movie. I, there, I have a very odd taste in, in movies. Like there, there's like, there's those very philosophical deep ones uh, where they have like really good conversations with each other that Link later does. But then there's like, uh, you know, like animated movies and things like that, that kind of touch the heart and hit at like what it means to be a father. Um, those mean a lot to me, but then there's like this, this other ground where something like Vanilla Sky, where whenever you're depressed I feel like these are the movies that make the most sense to me in those moments where it's kind of like to, to bring up a Disney and Pixar like we've been talking about with soul like kind of going into this space where you're just completely lost and you're just like you know feeling the grain of the sands of time and wondering what you're doing with your life and um it, it, is it going right and this is like one of those movies where it kind of hits at that in a very horrific way. Um, but um, kind of going along with some of the things that we described uh, with our MVD Rewind collection, uh, we were talking about this before we started recording. Um, this is probably my favorite designed, uh, my favorite packaging, um, just because 
as a horror movie, it it hits at some of the ideas that uh, Eric Wilkinson was doing with the MD Rewind collection of the side of it, doing making it look like y- you recorded it yourself using your own VCR, even though the the inside of it is meant to look like a, a beta tape. So you think that it's a VHS, but it's actually you know beta tape with just that one thing and, and the put it in your stomach. It. Yeah, <laughs> long live new flesh. Um, so yeah, just the the design all across just really leans into like the celebration of film because the entire movie is just like this really horrific exploration of something like a uh, funny games, which was a movie that I almost uh, went with because I. I like those films that kind of explore like what's how society feels about violence and in, in film and they just really go in a very odd direction with it. Um, so this is one of those films that that does that and it has like some of the the most messed up imagery that I've ever seen with like some body horror stuff. Yep. Um, that just like I mean it's gonna nestle in your head and live in your nightmares forever um so yeah i had to bring up video drone like it's it's uh it's definitely like yeah it's just the prettiest one Mm -hmm. Uh, got a big booklet on the inside too which is cool mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um well let's let's uh wrap here just by going over some uh, horror recommendations or at least ones that i recommend since i uh, own them um you guys could just chime in briefly since i know this is a horror podcast want to give you guys some uh some ones that we like or that we recommend here so just quickly first up we have cat people really cool awesome like hour and a half long documentary with uh, val luton on it um great release uh like we talked about before with hitchcock we have rebecca um which i had i know we had a new release on uh it was on netflix i never caught that one but yeah um <laughs> i saw it i reviewed it <laughs> yeah but th- this is just it, it's a classic um and i mean it, very interesting movie but uh i really liked it and it was a standout for me in a movie i hadn't really heard about before in hitchcock's filmography even though it was an academy award winner one best um, picture crazy yeah i know but it, def- definitely recommend that one it's one that you have to sit with for sure but you, do. you have to be prepared but it's i mean it's got some i mean Lawrence olivier is so good and really cool story yeah i, I love wild. the screenplay yeah it's great uh it's this would one. go this would go with your pick but uh elephant man i mean oh, yeah. it's it's not a it's not a horror film but it is horrific so I, I i put that in the stack there this is a newer release and it has just tons and tons of features like all the david lynch ones do we we like our black and whites apparently. yes we do this, yeah and we also like, uh, I didn't know if I was going to put this one in there or not, but personal hold on, shopper. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> yep. Let's hold hey, them up. Hey, there we go. Hold them up, guys. We'll, the we'll, we'll, Let's hold up we'll, our Kristen Stewart's. Oh, yep. this is a great movie, man. One that great we all three of them. Yeah, it's such yeah, excellent movie. It is. And, and when you like hear about this film, I think I heard about it before I saw it and it kind of someone explained to me that didn't like it. And then I was like, oh, that sounds stupid. And then you sit and watch it and you're just enthralled, even though nothing is going on. It's just, it's not a hangout movie necessarily, but you just enjoy kind of uh, being, being in the moment with Kristen Stewart. Absolutely. One of my favorites of hers. Uh, Next up, Pan's Labyrinth by Guillermo del Toro. Um, Also has a cool kind of three movie uh box set i don't know if they still have if that's still in print or not but that's a cool way to get um, yeah yeah. some devil's backbone yep another david lynch maholan drive really cool digibook release another 4k digital transfer which i mean i think that must have been like two years ago they started doing a ton of the 4k transfers and they just it just pops more than than the original blu-rays or some of the older ones that you pick up um Last few here, Insomnia. This is not the Christopher Nolan. <laughs> nope, not Christopher Nolan. Um, really. Stellan Scar- Skarsgård, and just a really kind of fucked up, odd movie. I've never seen that. Yeah, you should. Uh, you should check it out. It's uh, dark and bit feels like a nightmare at times, but it's cool. Uh, when you talked about funny games, which I actually haven't opened yet, sorry, I have a sticker on oh, it here. Man. I got this on the last sale, and I've been meaning to to check it out, but um, definitely one I watch have. It, to have. 
watch it with your wife and cuddle up and she'll love it. <laughs> no. Perfect date night movie. <laughs> it is it is an oh my god, it's great. Yeah. And last two here have Dress to Kill. Yeah. Which uh, nice. Brian De Palma film, uh, one that I hadn't seen before until I bought the Criterion, and it just was one of my uh, favorite films of his, even though it's very also fucked up, which is a theme with some of their movies. And finished up with uh, Don't Look Now. Um, the uh, out of look now. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's yep. out of print. Oh, good. There you go. Uh, Preston, do you have it? Oh, good. It's a great one. No, it's just a great movie. Like you guys it. have any other horror ones that I missed that you own that you think are uh, you know worthy of some shout outs? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you covered quite a bit of the ones that I would do, especially Don't Look Now, because I have some special story about that one. But uh, uh, I guess I would add uh, Tarkovsky's Stalker. Oh, that's in, a good one. In the mix. Uh, that, that's going to be picked up next month for sure. Yeah, you should you should check it out. It's uh, it's a it's definitely a very meandering movie. It's like almost three hours long, mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know a lot of art kids talk about it, and it, for good reason. Uh, it's uh, there's a lot of long shots in it. It's a Russian language film, but the stuff that it just like dives into with like Soviet Union's past and um things like that it's just uh really fascinating stuff kind of, kind of a continuation of like movies that have like a lot to say and hey there's some extras on here that where you know people historians are uh are talking about it and so something like hacks and or videodrome or you know th these are filmmakers that had something remarkable to say and it's kind of fun to chew on it speaking of art kids and the heaviest uh heaviest ones you can't forget uh the Bergman box set. This thing is massive. Yep. But yeah, that's Dude, that's awesome. How guys. many films are in that? Oh, I think like 40, 35. Literally like came out to like, like is it is this complete? Um I'm not sure. I, I think it's probably most of most of them at least. But yeah, it's it's a cool release. But um just a you really know, cool collection in general. Just something for everyone, man. It's like if you literally just go into Barnes and Noble and blind buy, blind buy shit, I feel like you're just gonna be happy with whatever you get. You know, I mean, there's there's the uh, the well, big releases they do that make money, and then there's ones that probably maybe only a handful of people buy. But it's just such a cool label and how they how they kind of pick and choose what to preserve and what to kind of make these awesome releases for. Well, especially now, I mean. You know, the thing is with Criterions, there's so many different paths you can take. When I was in college, you know, I was like, okay, like Criterions, I've got to get like, you know, all the Bergman stuff. And that's, that's what Criterion is. And that's what, you know, but the thing is, is there's so many, and you know, I, those paths weren't necessarily satisfying. Like I remember checking out some Vim Vendor stuff. No. <laughs> and I was like, I heard Paris, Texas was great. That's not for me. And I felt bad about it, but then I discovered Jim Jarmusch on yeah. there and I was like, wow, this is great. And so there's all these different paths you can take. Like I was saying, you can like go for the new Hollywood stuff or you can go with David Lynch and there's some 90s stuff that's coming out. That's really cool. Or you can go with foreign language stuff. I mean, there, there are really so many different paths you can take. I mean, and you can even go Bre saying. breakfast like club or princess diaries. If you're just kind of, you know, movies, movies like unless that, you're or... a normie, you're yeah. a normie loser, then you can go for that. <laughs> exactly. <kidding>. No, I <laughs> love the breakfast club. That movie's great. It, it would be awesome if they did Princess Diaries, uh, Princess Bride. <laughs> That's what you were talking about. Um, well, I'm going to ask this before we wrap up here. What's what's a movie that you would you hope to see in the collection one day, if you could pick one? That's a good question. Hmm. That is a good question. <laughs> There's like so much stuff. I guess it's like what what hasn't been done. I got it. I got know, mine. Properly. I got mine for sure. I'm going to say Goodfellas. Goodfellas? Goodfellas yep. is good. Because since uh, Scorsese had the Irishman on there, I feel like that kind of opens up stuff and has a shitty 4K a copy. And yeah, definitely does need a new transfer. Um, I would go for a movie that has good in the title as well. And I would go as it gets. That's oh. what I would choose. That's just like one of the best movies. It, it made me realize... This is cheesy, but it's personal. This made me made me realize how much I love um, the woman that I live with. It's great. So it's oh, it, dude, it, it it that movie. He's oh my god, dude, that movie just makes me cry. It's the best. So it's released in August from Imprint. 
and had a Twilight Time release, but I feel like it deserves Criterion. I have a Twilight Time release. Not that Criterion, I mean, Criterion is like what they say is the gold standard. It gets the stamp of approval and everything like that, but it it, it really does need to be kind of mented in that movie. So that's a good choice. What I would choose. What about you, Preston? Uh, there's, um, so one of the movies I almost brought up that, uh, that Cole also appreciates is an unmarried woman. Uh, but that's the same director, Paul Mazursi. Like he did stuff in the twilight time collection that I have like green bitch, uh, next stop green bitch village and Bob Carroll, Ted and Alice. But I would love to have criterion's version of Bob, uh, Bob, Ted Carroll and Alice or, um, Arrow Academy did a, a great release of the the apartment. Yes. Criterion did some like it hot. So I would love to have their version of the apartment, which I think is one of the best movies of all time. Yep. That's right all around the waterfront where I saw it the first time just out of nowhere. And I was like, boom, top 25 all time right there. Like just the apartment. watch it one time. Amazing. Cool. Well, I think that wraps it up, guys. Thanks for um, you know joining in here today and for checking out our episode on the Criterion Collection. Um, if you're listening to this, God bless you, but you should probably be checking this out on uh, Instagram TV or YouTube instead to get uh, kind of the disc that we're talking about uh, and, and get a good idea of, of what everything looks like. So thanks for checking it out. And hopefully this helps you on the upcoming Criterion sale here in July.